An intermediate step was Project Fireball. The Allied forces called them Foo Fighters. The fireballs were developed in Vienna Neustadt, a small town near Vienna, under the technical group of the SS. Here is a photograph of the fireballs in flight. These were radio control with no people on board. They were also called flying turtles, and due to certain new fuel combinations, they emitted a strong light. Developed to disrupt the ignition systems of enemy aircraft. This fits in with numerous reports of power failures associated with UFO sightings, including the New York blackout of the 60s. Next we have a drawing indicating the relationship between the Earth's magnetic force, seen here with the North and South Pole, and the electromagnetic field around the flying saucer. This is a list of 261 flying saucers, including three Honeyboo models and 84 Vrills. These were built towards the end of World War II. As well as this, there was some Metafile 7. The Honeyboo had a diameter of 25 meters. The development and construction of these flying machines created the most top secret documents and the most top secret projects of the Second World War. The engine of the Hanibu was the Kola Tachyonata electrogravitation motor in combination with a Fundograph belt generator. Most of the photographs are of the Hanibu II. Here we see the rooms inside the Hanibu. From these drawings, we can imagine what it would have looked like inside a German flying saucer. The red markers here are indicating guns on this saucer. These are photographs of the Hanibu II, probably taken during a test flight. We can see a gun on the bottom of this Hanibu, and what may be a symbol of the Third Reich. What a terrifying impact this must have made on people seeing the craft at a low altitude. This is a tank gun on the bottom of a Hanibu. Here again are construction plans from the Hanibu series, indicating that this mystery was once a reality. This gives weight to the suggestion that international oil companies who control the majority of world commerce may have something to gain by the continuing suppression of the technology which keeps these massive machines silently in the air. One explanation for the emission of light commonly associated with the night sightings of UFOs is that one method of propulsion is an intense cathode ray emission, creating a vacuum into which the craft moves. This form of propulsion is compatible with the misty impressions of this photograph. The gun is clearly visible under this craft. These photographs show the Honeybu 2 experimental craft fitted underneath with tank guns developed for the Sherman Panzer or Panther tanks. 
Although originally these craft were designed to carry electronic guns, they were later fitted with 7.5 centimeter tank cannons. The weight of the cannon would not have been a problem on the Honeyboo craft, which weighed almost 100 tons anyway, because the Tachyonan electro-gravitation engine generated its own gravitational field. Plans have been discovered for much larger craft. This Honeyboo 4 had several guns. There is also evidence of small, highly maneuverable craft. There were 17 vril of 11.5 meters with a speed of 2,900 kilometers per hour with remote control gun. On this vril 9 plan, we can see the cockpit of this one-man craft. These are low-altitude test flight photos. On this enlargement, we can see the pilot in the cockpit. UFO information is also available from the Hoogan Society. Next, our translator comments on some newspaper clippings. Here's an interesting press release. The first UFO flies in Prague. 